Welcome to another video where we're talking about just practice of NMR spectrum, spectrum, and how we could tell molecular formulas. Now we're given this formula here. This is the IR spectrum, but what we care about is the the actual NMR spectrum itself, right? So taking a look at, and I kind of label these uh, initially, but taking a look at uh, the NMR spectrum, we see that we have a CH2 that splits four times, which means that it has to have three neighbors, right? We have a CH3 that splits three times, which means that it has to have two neighbors. Well, I could ultimately assume that the two neighbors might be the CH3, right? And we have a CH3 here that finally splits one time, which means that it has zero neighbors, right? Now we're given the molecular formula C4 H eight O two, right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is draw my CH three. It doesn't matter. Uh, this is just the one of the most difficult things is just NMR spectrum. It's you can't really teach it. It's just something you're gonna have to do. But it's nice to see how I solve them, and, and you can see kind of brainstorm and kind of go about your stuff this way also. Now I'm gonna draw my CH three. So I'm gonna draw my CH three in such fashion. And I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to draw my CH3 in such fashion that it only splits once. So I'm going to draw my CH3, right? And the only way for this CH3 here to split once, I'm given an oxygen, so I'm going to use that oxygen. Now notice that my CH3 has zero neighbors, so therefore zero plus one is one, and therefore I will only see a singlet, which is concurrent with what I see here, right? Now I'm just going to draw randomly draw another part of the molecule, right? And I have a carbon here, right? So I have a CH, well, we took care of this one, right? I have a CH3 and a CH2, which means that these two are neighbors. So if these if these two are neighbors, then there, there, there's only one way I, I could make this work. And I'm gonna think of it as putting in a carbonyl group here, right? If I put a carbonyl group here, well, this is just an ester. This doesn't matter. We have two O's here, and then I'll draw my CH3. And this would be the molecule, right? Now let's make sense of it. We said that we have a CH3 that has one zero neighbors. That means a split once, which is what we've seen here. And this would be these CH3 protons here. We have another CH3 here that splits, let's, let me see splits three times so one two three so if it splits three times well how many neighbors does it have well coming from here to here it has two neighbors so therefore two plus one is three we have a ch2 here let's see how many times it splits one two three four well it has zero protons here zero neighbors here but it has three here so three plus one is four this would be the molecule we would see and actually, let's go ahead and check a double a uh, couple of things. Let's see how many carbons we have. We have one, two, three, four. How many hydrogens? Well, we have three here. We have two here. That's five. We have zero here. We have three here. So five plus three is eight hydrogens, and we have two oxygens. Uh, all right. So this this is a great way of, of identifying identifying this 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 formula. And this would be the molecular formula for this molecule. So let's try a couple more. So all right, so let's take a look at this uh, particular molecule here. It has a formula C9H10O2. All right, this is the IR spectrum. Again, we don't really care about the IR spectrum. We want to just be able to identify molecular uh, formulas just from NMR graphs. All right, so I kind of wrote on this a little bit, uh, but let's kind of mark it out and start fresh. All right, so let's take a look at the graph. We see that we have some sort of shift, chemical shift here around seven to eight with an integration of five. And remember I said that usually when you see an uh, chemical shifts and peaks around uh, seven to eight parts per, uh, parts per million, that's usually an aromatic ring. Now this aromatic ring in particular has five hydrogens vibrating, right? So which means that it has to be monosubstituted. It has to be, it has to be monosubstituted, 
right? And for those of you who are wondering, it doesn't matter where you put your, uh, your actually substituted part of the carbon uh, the, of, the, of the benzene ring. It just so happens that I like to do it in the right upper corner. All right, so this has to have five hydrogens, which is what we see here, right? So therefore, it has to be monosubstituted. Now, the molecular formula is C9H10O2, right? So I see that I have two hydrogens here, which just means which this means this has to be a CH2, and I have three hydrogens here, so this has to be a CH3. Now, this splits one, two, three, four times, right? This splits four times, right? And this splits three times, one, two, three. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, well, these has to be neighbors, right? These have to be neighbors. So therefore I have two oxygen in my molecule. So if these has to be neighbors, there's only one way I'm thinking I could go about this molecule. So I'm gonna draw a bond to my oxygen. I'm gonna put a carbonyl group there. I have a CH2, that's a CH3, right? Now look, they're neighbors, right? Again, we have a CH3 here, it splits one, two, three times, so therefore it only, it has to have two neighbors. So one, two protons. The CH2 here splits how many times? One, two, three, four. Well, how many neighbors does it have? It doesn't have any neighbors here, but it has three here, so three plus one is four. And indeed we see a quartet here, right? So indeed, this is a structural formula for the molecule. Now, we could go to the IR spectrum and we could see that a sharp peak around 760 centimeters inverse is usually where we see a ketone. But again, we're not really concerned about IR spectrum. So this is also another way of, you know, just concluding. But usually, um, you know, for, uh, just for pure NMR purposes, they probably won't give you uh, an IR spectrum because it's technically giving away the answer. Uh, but another way of doing, of, of kind of catching yourself is actually calculating the, uh, calculating the degrees of unsaturation, All right? So how many degrees of unsaturated, uh, unsaturation is it in this molecule? Well, remember we said that a ring count as one. So this benzene ring here, without the double bonds, is one degrees of unsaturation. Now we have two, three, four, and then we have this double bond here. So this has five degrees of unsaturation. So let's see if our calculations add up to what we see in this molecule here. Now the molecular formula is C9H10O2. Remember we said that when we're calculating degrees of unsaturation, we, unsaturation, we ignore oxygen, right? So this is c 9 H two times nine is 18 plus two is 20, right? So we say 20 minus 10 is equal to 10, divide that by two, and indeed we have five degrees of unsaturation, which is exactly what we saw.